So hello and welcome. My name is Rachel Shields from Knowing in Nature and um, we're in a really magnificent place here in Far North Queensland today. I have a beautiful dear friend and sister here sharing with me but um, I'll let her speak for herself because she's got an amazing way of connecting with the earth, connecting with nature, connecting with country, connecting with culture and translating between the worlds between the scientific world, between the cultural world, and I just think, um, feel really honoured and privileged to be here today, sharing and yarning. <laughs> by this amazing waterfall. Hi everyone, my name's Peter. Um, talking to you, I'd just like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the country that we're talking from today and speaking with. This is an amazing place, as Rach said, it's the start of the Barren River. And the Barren River is so important to tropical North Queensland. When people come to Cairns, they don't realise it starts all the way up here in the mountains. And it feeds so many people all the way down to the coast. Everyone enjoys it. There's different places you can swim, different places you can fish. And this is a really special place to me. There's so many different country types here. So many ways of just connecting. What's some of the different country types here? Because I recognise that a lot of people are walking through nature, but not necessarily maybe consciously recognising when country shifts and that song line shifts as well. And they're going from all these little micro um, ecologies, ecosystems, and they're walking through. It's like um, you know all the different uh, instruments in a song that make the entire song. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Like, So we're in really old rainforest here. Up this way, you can see the rainforest and it goes into open woodland on the other side very quickly. This is Mount Hypipami and there was a big explosion when all the volcanoes came and the sister's story that's on the tableland. And so from here, there's open woodland down the waterfall and rainforest. So this place provides so much everybody. Visitors love coming here, our cassowaries here, all the different sorts of possums that we have in our rainforest across North Queensland, they all here. It's a place that makes me feel calm when I come here. Lots of food, lots of medicine, lots of good energy. You know, the waterfall makes you feel so clean. How long have you been working with understanding nature through? You've got a couple of languages to be able to translate what you're seeing and um, the cycles and patterns and how nature expresses itself. Yeah, for me, coming here with the Jittable people brought me here as well, and I'd been here visiting before that. And the stories that they told me for this place changed the way that I behave here um, because I could understand what the right thing was to do and what not to do. Um, for me, I like bringing people here because it is that where the water comes from and it connects us. And, you know, I'm privileged to have been spent so much time with different mobs um, and learning from them and it allows me to see things in country that I couldn't see before just with my western eyes. So what yeah. other dimensions have been added to your <laughs> western eyes? <laughs> What's the importance of that lens, that indigenous lens through your understanding of it? I think being able to help 
non-Indigenous people understand the depth of the knowledge and that stories are not just stories, you know, they're layers of information and knowledge about how to look after the country, how to behave, how to treat each other. Um, yeah, for me that sort of shifted the way that I looked at country and I could observe more that I wasn't seeing before. I was looking at it as a tree, not as a life force or as the fact that it could provide so much from every part um, and that we didn't have to destroy it to do find that. Um, yeah, that's and also with mob, like helping them understand that other language as well and that it's just another language um, and a way of seeing the world and understanding the world. It's, I guess, it's been, that knowledge has been transferred a lot in books, but you don't really learn from a book. So, even if you know what a plant looks like when you in a book, when you come out into country, you can't recognise that plant. Unless you've been with people on country who know that plant, and then you start to understand, I can smell it, it looks like this, sometimes it looks like that, but that's its pattern. And you see it then, you can find it. So, also like that language it describes something about the plant like that latin so that's how we know that's that same plant so don't be frightened of that language either can you give us an example of that that latin like interpretation of a plant because i think like something i learned a while back is when someone gave me the latin name i said what does that word mean because I want to understand the construct of the word to better understand how they're relating that to a living thing, like yeah. that type of tree. And then that helps me feel a bit more comfortable, even though the word might be, it's almost like, a, you know, it's, it's totally learning another language, but it's like reciting Shakespeare, you know, but being from country and trying to recite Shakespeare and the rhythms and the patterns are different so you feel shaped differently which can feel uncomfortable because I can't relate to that shape like going from the country to the city you know I can't relate to the to the sharp edges and the straight lines where nature or you know I can see vastness out on country and curves and flowing things so I guess helping to understand the construct of something is like a key to a door where we can begin to relate to one another and value the knowledge systems as well. Yeah, I think like phyllas, like leaf, so like platy fillers telling you something about that leaf, platy like the size of the leaf, so that kind of gives you a description for the tree based on that language. So it's a bit like with Taipan language, chi means fruit, yeah. something you can eat. Who is tree everything that is a tree has that starting so that's how you know and so in western science they teach us that so that's how we can recognize that thing but as i said before it's only recognizing it as a thing not as all of the component parts and its uses and and its being as itself yeah. and the importance of that in culture is really something that western science doesn't see like it's missing the actual dreaming of that thing yeah like the cardboard box yeah it originated as a dream but it's just a cardboard box <laughs> yeah you know? whereas that tree can give you so many things medicine shade food it provides life to all the other things that are important in the system yeah and it's that I think, you know, indigenous people are like the first ecologists, you know, they're like, they knew so much and... Know so much. Yeah, know so much. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And I think that's important too, you know, we were yarning about that, like, sometimes people think that, and again, like that role, you know, something 
Indigenous culture is stuck in the past. It's very present. Yeah. It's with country. It's with us here now. Yeah, definitely. We were having a conversation about how knowledge is a living thing. History is a living and present thing. The dreaming is a living and present thing. And the people are a living and present presence <laughs> and to some people like for myself it feels really natural to acknowledge life in that way but through the writing down of knowledge in that itself it's actually stuck in time so it's not continually shifting and changing like the natural world is constantly shifting is. and changing so this giant book that we live in is always you know, adding things that are present in that moment of time, seasonal expressions, sunlight falling in different places, reflecting in different places, you know, and that's the, we, we wanted to talk about the two sciences, the ancient science of the living knowledge place embodied by indigenous people from all around the planet, and then the other science that captures the moment and keeps referring to that one moment, moment in time <laughs> as truth and reality, but it's actually not animated as such. And then it's always influenced by the person that's talking about it. It's not actually coming from the greater science of life, which we're all part of and embodied in. And this country's changed so much over time, where we're sitting right now. It's expanded and contracted over geological, like long time. And the stories for this place are held in this place. And the mob know those stories of change. And they can see and watch the stories of change that are happening now. Yeah. That knowledge is alive. Very much <laughs> alive. As you can see, it's flowing, it's fluid, it's alive, it's rich. It makes you feel so connected when you come and sit in country. Like I, I come here pretty often, not often enough. <laughs> but immediately when I come here, I always feel better. I always feel like whatever's been bothering me or my mind or is blocking and creating negative things, it goes when I'm here like the water flows all the way until it's gone out to sea. <laughs> the fresh water here too. The sound. All the animals. I've lived on the Tableland for 23 years. I think about leaving sometimes, but um, it's where I feel at home. It's a very vibrant landscape. It changes quickly, hey. So we, um, the wet season hasn't kicked in <laughs> yet here, so this would be thundering this place if it was the wet season. We couldn't sit here. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be washed away like a leaf down to the ocean. Waiting for that rain now to come. Yesterday seeing the storms build up got really excited. Yeah, off in the distance. It's one of my favourite times of the year up here. What would you offer to people who are very um, interested Entrained, I think might be the word, through that science language, modern scientific language. What would you offer them in regards to considering the science of nature? To listen. <laughs> but really listen. Because often we're in such a hurry even when we're doing our experiments in the field. You miss stuff because you don't actually sit and listen. You don't spend time talking to nature. Yeah. You're brushing past it. 
again, treating it like it's a thing and not a force. And if you start to listen and pay attention, you learn more and you can see more, like I said before, you know, like you notice more, you see the changes, you see the patterns. I don't swim here anymore. It's inviting. But you don't need to because the water cools you, the forest cools you as well, you know. You can come and wash your face and listen and feel that energy because when you walk from here, that energy stays inside you. Yeah. So through thousands of years of practice, not all places are for everyone to immerse themselves in. Just like not all knowledge is universal, like when it's written down in a book, we think everybody has access to the knowledge. It doesn't work that way. No. And the value in that is that we each hold pieces of that knowledge and, and Together we all hold the knowledge. So as we grow and mature within ourselves, we're able to hold a little bit more knowledge because we can actually hold it respectfully and responsibly. And it's not for everybody to each part of that knowledge because it might drive you crazy <laughs> as well. It's a lot of responsibility yeah. looking after the knowledge that you are responsible for. That's your responsibility and if only one person has all that knowledge, then what happens when that person's gone? Yeah. That way knowledge is kept alive. Yeah, it's pretty intelligent. <laughs> it's a pretty intelligent system, really. It is. Yeah, complex, intelligent, yet simple at the same time. Five words come to your heart right now. Joy, <laughs> peace, I think about all the energy that this place has and holds. That's the other thing that's really important too, Rach, is like scientists spend so much time talking about country and not enough time in it. Because they get busy, you know. Everyone gets really busy and we all need to spend time connecting back to the source where we came from. All of us. Yeah cultivating that relationship. So whatever we um, put our energy into becomes stronger in the world. So if we put our energy into that relationship with country, call it nature, call it whatever you identify the natural world as here in Australia, as um, indigenous peoples, we, through the English language, refer to landscape as country, usually also meaning 
the place of our origin, the country, which holds our language, holds everything we're talking about. Um, but it's very important to, to keep that, the umbilical cord, let's call it, because it's actually what can feed and sustain us. And we've got to keep that connection clear and open. And then country will reflect the health that's shared between us as well. And that's what I'm hearing you say as well, that if we're um, gonna use science as a language, then the language itself needs to be clear and healthy as well, so that the science can be pure and true as well. Because yeah. if it's not, then it's, it's just not. <laughs> it's an incomplete um, information, form of information, you know, it's incomplete. Yeah, and, and that's not helpful to anybody, especially for young people that are utilizing that language, accessing those um, spaces, those books or databases to try and learn more about the world. If it's, if it's, yeah, if it's not clear, then the message, yeah, they're not learning the right thing about the world. Yeah. And, you know, often, again, like we're talking about withholding knowledge, science looks at one, often they look very much at one thing, you know, they're looking at that threatened species. But if they're not talking to the people who are looking at the plants and the people who are looking at the other animals in the relationship, they're not getting the whole picture of that animal. Exactly. Yeah. And if you're only looking at that from a database and from reading stuff online or in a book, you don't get it. Yeah. You need to actually find the data that's in the country. Yeah. yeah. And it changes all the time. Exactly. Exactly. Like some people are amazed at how many names one place will have and that's because the seeds and the shifting so it's very relational so indigenous science is relational and in the right timing yeah mm. and it just <laughs> it's quite normal <laughs> it's very normal <laughs> It's much more normal than what, you know, it makes you feel much more part of the whole yeah. and not alone. Um, yeah. yeah. And yeah. Like, you know, that's, that's something really that all humans need to feel, you know. Yeah. And we need to, or we could work more together in this um, way of relating and sharing knowledges and, and working with people such as Peter who have the ability to support that code shifting, support that um, ability to relate through seemingly different languages to show how that word actually relates to that word from those two different places and how we can move forward together with that and better support the balance in the world as human beings living on a planet mm. yeah, with you know custodial responsibilities to this planet as well. Mm. For ourselves, for our ancestors, and for, for the little children. people yet to follow in our footsteps, hopefully their beautiful footsteps. Yeah, you know, like the world feels at the moment when I speak to people, it's like they're in crisis, you know, and that, that energy of crisis is like filtering through everything. And I feel like a lot, but I'm constantly trying to help people to be, to keep that energy away, you know, to stay positive, to stay, wake up, look at what we need to do and let's work together to do that, you know, like it's take the positive from what has been a really negative situation over the last 18 months that the world and Australia, you know, we've, the bushfires, what they did to people, you know, and to the country, and then COVID, yeah. you know, this thing. But all of that's trying to tell us something about the fact that we're not listening to each other, we're not listening to country, we're not respecting each other. Yeah. And if we do that, then balance will more come. Exactly. The yeah. earth is a very intelligent being. Yeah, it's been around for a very long time. <laughs> Many civilizations have had a go at it. <laughs> Hopefully, we can, um, you know, succeed. Hmm. I believe we will. I have like, faith we will. Yeah. And it's taking the time 
to go to country, your place that you like or you connect with and listening so that you can feel better in yourself and you can work better with other people. So thank you for asking me to come here today <laughs> and talk. It's a real honour, right? Yeah. And we, um, you know, being in this space is a, always a privilege to be as a visitor in someone else's country to enjoy the beauty and, you know, the power, the beauty, the power, and the fact that this place has been caretaken for thousands upon thousands of years for hundreds of generations to walk gently on country here. It's because of those people that it's so beautiful today as well. And I hope that for all the people that have experienced, um, yeah, not being able to go outside in these times, and for people that uh, can't go outside for other reasons, that the beauty of this place reaches your heart right now and brings medicine to your mind and your spirit. So thank you for being here. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thanks to this place.